All right, welcome in. It's another week of the happy hours. We adjust our camera here. Uh, there we go. Anybody there? Hey, let's see. All right, getting ready for oh, another yeah. week of let's happy plug hour. In here. All right, Mark Anybody Carlisle hey. is here. Hey, buddy, can you hear us? All right, getting ready. Oh, yeah. oh we got it. Cody Clemens. Hey, just got done. Just got done watching Cody's Facebook Live. Down, got a new Chevy. What was it? A Silverado? Hey, Cassie. Hey, Cassie Mingle. Hey, hey, it's happy hour. That's right. That's right. We got to say. Uh, oh yeah, cheers. A, a, a yellow hammer, uh, Belgian white. I think they're in Huntsville, so they're right up the street. Yellow Hammer Brewing Company. Out of Huntsville. Yeah, Huntsville, yep. Alabama. Hey, Rammer. Clayton, what's up, man? Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. Cody? Hammer, Jammer, Yellow Hammer. I tell you what, man. Mark likes that. One of the best business guys I know right there. Two of them, really. Clayton and Cody. There Cody's down there in Panama City Beach. I mean, living the dream, man. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, it's incredible. Um, well, man, we got some big stuff on the uh, happy hour today. Yeah, uh, we're going to be busy. Yeah, what? Well, you know, first things first. You know, we always like to start the show out with a, some fun stories, I guess. Uh, and you had the uh, privilege of speaking with Charlie. Man, let me tell you. Uh, so, so we got the internet issues. I don't have. This enough, is at home. Yes, at home. I don't have enough uh, uh, signal strength to run the TV and all the the devices and. Uh, the Xbox and everything that we needed. Now, now, let's understand you have a 15 year old at home. Yeah. He's the, really the one that started. Now, now, I had problems watching live football, which was frustrating, but he really complained about it. So, we got into looking at the speed. Um, so, we're going to try to change providers. So, we called him a week and a half ago. Um, late happy birthday. That's, that's good. That's for me. That's good. That's my boy up yeah. in Oregon. Yeah. So, we called about a week and a half ago. And they were supposed to send out, they said, you want to self-install? We said, yeah. So, right, how hard could this so, be? Yeah, so they, they're going to send the equipment. Well, yesterday we still had, haven't gotten anything, so right. we call them, okay? The first person we talked to says, there's a, there's a note on your account. Okay? What happened? And, and she talks to a supervisor. Then they tra blind transfer us to another department. We have to tell the whole story I don't again. think she really wanted to help you, so she sent you well, out Well, the funny somewhere. thing is that the note on the account, like I, I guess they come up with these notes, but they don't share them with anybody. Right, right, right. Why do you have to talk to a supervisor to figure out what the note on the account? Yeah, I mean, maybe she can't read. Right, so long story short, they couldn't send it out for self-install because they hadn't had service at the house in 24 months. Oh. So they couldn't send yeah, it. So what did they do? Sense. What'd they do? Nothing. Didn't call us nothing. <laughs> didn't do anything. So, you, so in other words, you were trying to pay yeah. them money. So we're waiting on a new service. I mean, yeah, which... Right now, it's tight, right? I mean, you, these guys are not getting customers hand over oh, fist. They're leaving. Man. Man, it's, it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. The blind transfers. I mean, the notes in the system. I it. We finally got it squared away there. I think they're coming late tonight to, <laughs> late to, sure. to set it up. So sure. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. I mean, hey, yeah. yeah, I saw something in, like, Money Magazine talking about Charter. And, like, they went from, like, the worst, like, terrible, awful, you know, I got to watch what I'm saying. But customer service to now they're like just a plain awful. So that's good for just them. Just a plain awful. Yeah, yeah. that is good. Uh, I mean, that's especially with them all. Oh, yeah, these big better. companies are awesome, right? So we're, we're hoping the speed improves and uh, we can run everything, TV and Xbox and everything tonight. We should be good. Well, I tell you, you know, my story of the week on customer service is this dimwit. I go, by the way, I've been banking with dim Compass wit. for, what, over 10 years. It's BBVA Compass. I go to my normal, usually, granted, I have a branch right outside uh, um, my office, and I didn't decide to go there this time. They all know me. They, I go in, I could throw 20 deposits through the drive through right? Yeah. Oh, well, this time I said, you know, I'm going to be more efficient. I'm going to go right when I pass one. So I go to this one, and here comes Mr. Uh, I had now have authority because I'm running the drive through at a compass. There is not a single car in the drive through and you know what he tells me? He spends five minutes lecturing me about how there is a maximum of three deposits in the drive-thru and that I have five. So I proceed to tell him, uh, well, since there's nobody in the drive-thru, I'm looking around. Yeah, just That's go ahead. That's customer service. That's great, right? Yeah. You know? So then he says, my rules are our rules at, at Regions say it's a limit of three. You know what my response was? Hey, 
my rules say you'll take as many as I give you. So we're going to be at a stalemate here because your rules say one thing and mine is the customer say yeah. another. As a bank, you either want to hold my money or you don't. I'm just saying, but yeah. he spends five minutes yeah. arguing with me because he has authority That's now. That's awesome. You know? So anyway, and then you know, everybody's asked me, hey, did you go around one time? I'm not giving him that satisfaction. So you I'm just doing left what he said. with him? No, he gave it back to me, but I did it. But... You know, as we'll get through there, Man. and uh, I'm telling you, sometimes these people don't think about the 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 big picture. I guess the big picture, making it easy. Uh, I want to answer Mark's question. We're we're on the Amazon Fire Stick right now. Is what what we're you're not doing the free TV one where you're stealing TV, are you? No, no, that's good. And uh, we we that's bought good. a couple of apps, but uh, well, he he, I've, I've been trying. Anybody knows we we cut the cord. YouTube TV. By the way, folks, YouTube TV is not really YouTube. They, they, Google has used the brand name of YouTube because we all know it. Google TV. Has, huh? It's really Google TV. $35 a month, anything I want. Now, the flip side of that is I'm going to need everybody to start a writing campaign to my wife. I also had to get Sling for $30 a month because of that stupid Hallmark channel. Yeah, Sling. I mean, I tried Hallmark, that a little dude. Bit. Hallmark. I tried that. Of all things, costing me thirty dollars a month essentially. That's what you gotta have. But it still cut my bill in half, by the way. I mean, dang gum. I gotta watch. It. You I'm know what I'm saying? But well, let's get into some real estate. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. You know, uh, uh, rate updates. Yeah. So we've got. Uh, so rates are, are still moving higher right now. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm I'm looking at the Freddie Mar Freddie Mac uh, primary market uh, mortgage market survey. It, Last or this week today was four point three two was the average rate, which was up a, a little bit, uh, but that's the highest since December twenty ninth of two thousand sixteen. Wow! So they're definitely moving up. The uh, increase of a rate hike next week, next month by the Fed is yep. now up to like seventy three percent. Well, hey, so by the way, very, great very news. I mean, they, they say that it's going to be good news that we got Janet yelling out at the Fed. She spent four years, first time in, I can't remember how long, 20, 40 years, 30 years, I don't know, that they they didn't give a second term to a Fed chairman. Well, the next guy's got his hands full. With everything going on with uh, with the markets, uh, rates are moving, stock market has, has been at sky highs. Uh, I've talked to some, some people that are a lot smarter than I am that say we still got some time on this run of the stock market. The things should still be good for another better. another ten or twelve months at least, or, or maybe late two thousand nineteen. So, I agree. Uh, good news there. So, so really good news all around. Rates are moving a little higher, which people aren't going to love, but you know a lot of other things are going in the right direction. Well, you know, I mean, oh, uh, Mark Carlisle wants to let everybody know he's using Hulu TV. Yes. he is. He wants to make hey, sure. Hey, Don Bonner, how you doing, buddy? Don, good to see what's you. happening? And Tiffany uh, from the, my Auburn days. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen her really since my, I guess, my freshman year. So, uh, hello, Nashville. I assume you're still in Nashville. But, uh, all right, so keep talking about rates, though, because realistically, we're sitting in the mid-fours for most people now, right? Yeah. Historically, where does that put us? Oh, historically, it's still very low. But the, the problem is we've gotten so used to that three-point something. And I'm talking about rates on a 30-year fixed mortgage. Okay, like I said last week, probably 80, 90% of, of loans are 30-year fixed. That's so right. We're in the fours, and so when when people initially hear four point five right. or four point seven five, they're going to think that's really high. I think the average over over a long time is probably about eight percent. Right, right, right. So so anything below that is great, but when when you're moving from three and a half to four, four and a half, it just it just sounds well. We got a general. We've gotten so accustomed. It's been it's been ten years now. We've been really low rates. So wouldn't you agree too that we we have a generation of millennials? That have grown up essentially. I mean, from the time they were teenagers until now in their mid twenties, they've never seen rates really below five percent. So they, they their new normal is below five percent, and they are just aghast at the yeah, idea. So, so when we start moving closer and closer to five percent, they're going to feel like those rates are really high. Um, you know, they just got like I said, gotten so used to seeing them low, and and they really haven't moved. A whole lot, you know. Typically, rates will they'll, they'll move up a little bit. They'll come back down. Things will be fine. They'll normalize. So, you know, if you're looking at 60, 90 day window, you can kind of ride the storm out. But now, rates have really moved. Seems like for good. So, well, I mean, it's much you, different. You would think, but there's no again, there's no time in it, which is something I've been telling people. Is don't there's no time in it. And also, don't. It's a great time to sell your house, but don't go rushing into anything because the rates are going to go from 4.375 to 4.5. I mean, that is, 
The savings yeah, is negligible. Still, still a lot to play out in the real estate market. And, Absolutely. And a lot to think about when you're making those decisions. Uh, it really is. you know. And, Thank you, Don. Uh, good to see you, buddy. And Damon, good to see you. Roanoke, Virginia. So, Damon, good to see you. Uh, talking about Caveat M Tour here in Alabama. We're unique. Yeah. Let's, tell me about that. Well, I'll tell you this much. Caveat M Tour, I like to say that because it's like makes me feel smart. But yeah. it's really buyer beware. It's uh, uh, I guess it's Latin, right? I mean, you went to Georgia Tech, so I, I don't we, know. Yeah, we don't study yeah, languages. It's Latin. But anyway, we study math. Alabama but, is one Latin. of the remaining, is the remaining, what we call pure caveat M tour state. And what that means is the buyer must satisfy himself completely. And those uh, agents that are watching from around the country are, are probably laughing because they have all these disclosures they sign. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually in favor of caveat M tour because what you end up having is the buyer, he if he thinks there's mold if he thinks that there is something wrong he must disclose i mean he must find it out yeah. and not rely on a disclosure from a seller yeah i know in, i know in california we had uh, certain other things that you had to disclose or else they could come back on you um so there were a lot more disclosures or a lot more uh, uh offering of information about the house well and than, you know here. part of the problem though is that you have you have hey ken ken williams hey buddy um is the idea that, like my, Amanda, my wife, if you were to ask her to put in writing, right, how is the air conditioning units? I'm the one that gets some service as the husband. I get everything done, but she's going to supposed to fill out a seller's disclosure form and say whether or not they're in good condition. Well, her thought process is going to be they blow cold air. So hey, 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 Darren. And, and so they're obviously good. Well, that's just not the case, right? I mean, so now what that agent's doing is they're in some ways they're putting that that person up i almost said committing perjury from my old law days but she's unintentionally lying right right they're not that good and they're on their last leg say whatever and it's not that she was trying to lie she just didn't know yeah. right and so in alabama though any agent that tries to get you to sign a seller's disclosure needs to not do that because in my you know really it's my legal opinion and my uh, and my r realtor position is that if you sign a seller's disclosure when the government via the legislature by passing a law like caveat emptor they basically said you have the right to remain silent you don't have to disclose anything yeah. so when you tell your client they must disclose all this stuff you're committing malpractice. Then they're, they're almost liable because they may not be telling the whole story. They're telling a little bit of it. So if they tell a little bit of it, and then it turns into a bigger problem. Absolutely. They might be liable for not disclosing Absolutely. most accurately. But what must you disclose, right? And, and one of the things, you know, I still do some things. Hey, Ken Hamilton, uh, big Nashville. Uh, Darren James said, what happens when a contractor repairs the home and is also the home inspector for the buyer? He then calls out, uh, well, that and denies ever fixing it. That that's fraud, uh, you know. I mean, he then calls out items. In other words, what he's saying is, guy repairs a house prior, yeah. and, and then, then is also, also the, home, the inspector, home inspector, and then calls it out again. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, once again, we got to get into a little bit of integrity here, right? We got to trust each other out here. And you know, one of the big examples I'll give you here is latent defects. And I still do some expert witness testimony occasionally. We talk about latent defects and what latent defects are. That's anything that could not be found by a reasonable inspection of the property. And it happens all the time. It's where the litigation would occur in Alabama on this is where something's hidden. Uh, the example I use is unexploded bombs in the backyard, right? Who would expect unexploded bombs in the backyard? That's an extreme example that won't ever happen, but right. Right, you don't want little Johnny running yeah. through, boom, <laughs> there goes Johnny, right? Yeah. I mean, boom. Yeah. Um, so, the, the most common area we see it is when, say, somebody has a leaky wall, basement wall. Uh, Darren James said it's happening right now to him. Uh, shysters are bad, Ken Hamilton. <laughs> uh, by the way, that Ken Hamilton right there had a poop, a dog poop business that he sold on, was it Craigslist, Ken, for like 20 grand? And he did, like, he picked poop up in all the country music stars' houses. But anyway, Golly. I digress. Yeah. Um, but going back to this, what happens is they'll put sheetrock and over a wall that's leaking because they know it's going to take time to get through the, right. the two by fours and everything. Notice it. Right. Yeah. The problem is they knew it, they covered it up, and really, here's the thing with this stuff: you know it when you see it. Don't do it. You, the right now, they, these all these guys have uh, FLIR guns or whatever they call it, where they can see the moisture readings. Yeah. You can't even cheat on roofs anymore because they got the drones that go up. 
So you thought you getting away with something on the roof? Not anymore. We even had it where there was some certain species of birds that we then went to the city, local city of Vestavia, and said, hey, we need to move it. They're, oh, no. That's the pecky, you know, the speckled blue heather <laughs> bird, and it must not be disturbed. Yeah. <laughs> like, that gum. We wouldn't have seen this darn That's endangered, endangered bird. Endangered wildlife. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. Can't affect that. So the best part was it was on a chimney. So I just told my people, I said, man, it's getting warm in here. We might want to start a fire. <laughs> Just kidding. If anybody is big, I, we would never hurt the never. speckled blue heather. Never. Thing. But anyway, so uh, if anybody has questions about that, ask in the comments below, at, even after the show, and I'll be glad to get that to you. Uh, but it is a big thing in Alabama. Many yeah. of these buyers and sellers come from other states. Yeah, like any you. questions you got, you got to get it inspected. There are so many different inspections that they do now uh, septic inspection, mold inspection, Chinese drywall. I've heard of radon. I, Right on. We're dealing that, with it right now. That, that happens very often, but there, there's just a lot of things to look at. One more thing I did want to mention, though, that buyer beware is not applicable in new construction. Obviously. It's new. Uh, it better be new, and it better be good. So the other thing is, too, we, we always recommend you get a um, home inspection, even on new construction, which, yeah. uh, quite frankly, you talk to these inspectors, they'll tell you they find more wrong with new construction than they do uh, used if you were in uh, the Cody Clemens car game. Interesting. So, yeah. Very so, interesting. Moving on to credit repair. Moving on. So credit repair. So I want to bring some things up. Uh, you know, I've just got a service that with our company where where we can set people up and, and they analyze your credit report as it is. It's not always for terrible credit. I mean, I've got some people, and I'm going to read through some examples here, some people that might be in the, the 670, 680 range trying to get up to 720. Uh, right. For example, or maybe a 600 trying to get to a 640, um, and they they really put together a nice uh, a nice little report, some information, so you can know exactly what you need to do. Um, you know, especially if you've got time. Let's say you got time four, five, six months before you're going to buy a home. Um, might be a good idea to go ahead and look at your credit report and see if there's things that you can do to to improve your standing. Obviously, you're going to be saving up for a down payment um, and working on those credit scores that can really improve your position once you get there. Um, let's see, I've got, uh, you know, a simple example. I've got a guy that's that's just working, you know, he, he's not sure if he wants to do anything real soon, looking for a 720 credit score that might improve the rates a little bit on a conventional loan. All he's got to do is, is pay down a uh, credit card balance. So basically, a balance in 1983, let's pay it down to $325, and that's going to you know, boost that score a little bit. Um, we got some other people looking at uh, some accounts that are in dispute, and, and this service is giving them... Hold on, let me get my microphone. When you talk about disputes, what are you talking about? So let's say that there's a collection or some account or something inaccurate on your credit report, and you call and dispute it. Right. Now, the biggest problem with a credit dispute is it kind of takes it out of your score. So if I pull your score and it's borderline, let's say it's 640, and you got a couple of right. disputed accounts, well, we don't really know if that's an accurate score because you, you've basically removed some negative information okay. when we pulled the report. So if that negative information was in there, your scores might be less or, or worse. Right. So, so that's why it, it kind of manipulates the score. So, it's it's not accurate. Well, talk about this too. We had some changes at the. I guess it was with the middle of last year with the government top making these uh, credit bureaus dealing with medical debt. Right. Wasn't there some changes there where the credit score was? Uh, they took some of that out of the scoring. Yeah, now medical collections are a little, a little different. A lot of times we don't have to deal with those sometimes, but um, they still affect your score. And medical collections are probably some of the worst because you've got a lot of people that don't realize that they had the bill. They, their things come in the mail. They don't see them. They don't address it. They don't deal with it. And, and then all of a sudden it pops up as a collection on their credit ruin and their scores. So, yeah, they, are, uh, they did make some changes, um, wiping out some of those medical collections and, and because it's companies. an area that one of the things that, you know I remember as an attorney dealing with was that sometimes they'll sell it these debts out to multiple collections. See, hey, who can collect? Yeah. And so they're forcing some of the bureaus to go back and verify these medical collections a little bit harder, so it can be more accurate. But uh, I mean, this is basic information. Just sending sending the the account information for who they need to contact with the creditors 
and get those disputes changed so we can get an accurate and, and quite uh, frankly, the, you have some letters, I mean, like, and I think they can find them on the web, too, right, where we can go out to dispute letters, I guess you'd say, right? Because one of the big things is that when you dispute with the credit bureaus, they do have, a what, 30 days, I believe, to respond, or they must remove whatever negative. Yeah, yeah they've got about 30 days to respond. The creditor, once you send that letter disputing it to them, they've got 30 days to respond. But we just, you know, you want to do that outside of the mortgage process. Or, or before you get into the mortgage yeah. process, handle it up front. Uh, this is another one. Just got a couple of. Uh, we're trying to get to a six twenty. He's got a couple of balances to pay down. We give him the exact amount to pay him down to. We're not paying him all the way off either. You know, it's good to keep right. a little bit of a balance because that's helping your credit score. And he's also got some information on his student loans um, to do right. and things like that. So it's it's a really a, a great service. Puts together a, a detailed action plan that you can take and then go. You know, do the legwork. So it's a free service that we provide. Well, one thing I, you know, I was going to ask you today because you know, um, you know, everybody knows I'm a big Clark Howard guy. Anybody know, know Clark uh, Credit People? Credit People. You know them? Credit People. I don't know them. Cody must, but he he must be good. If Cody's talking about them. Cody, who is that? Who they are? A a credit repair. Um, the question that I had was regarding uh, Equifax breach because I've gotten some questions in the last. I don't know, uh, two months since the Equifax breach, a lot of folks have frozen their credit and then they want to get a mortgage. What do they need to do? Because they, they filed a freeze at Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, the big three. Yeah. What do they need to do when and they there, see and there may be some there may be some um, services that credit card companies offer to help you facilitate that, maybe freezing your credit, things like that. But typically, you contact the three bureaus? credit bureaus. And Equifax, unfreeze them. TransUnion and Experian and request them to unfreeze it. The problem then, that I think a lot of people have with the with these third party banks and everything that are watching it, uh, he's sending us a link to credit people, so they must be good third party vendors. We'll definitely put it in the in, in well, obviously you're going to have it in the description below when you're sending that link. Um, but uh, uh, but with the Equifax, they don't trust that I, they don't trust Equifax to be the one to protect them since Equifax is the one that hurt them. Right, exactly. You know, so they're sitting yeah. there going, what do I do? And the only true way to deal with it is to freeze it. But when y'all pull credit, are you pulling from all three bureaus? Yeah, we got to pull from all three. Most, uh, I would say all mortgage companies do. I've heard some different uh, things from credit repair companies, furniture companies, and things like that. Uh, they might pull Equifax more often or TransUnion more often. But we pull all three, Equifax, TransUnion, Experian. We knock out the high and low and take the one in the middle. You just so, say, so in other words, we have a mortgage. So if I've frozen my credit, I need to make sure that I've unfrozen all three bureaus yes. for you to be able to pull it. And, and one of the things is, and if if uh, Will Ainge, he said he guarantees a 100-point jump in less than three months. Man, that's incredible. That's awesome. Guaranteed. Guaran hey, yeah, I like the word guaranteed. No, um, uh, but as far as this Equifax stuff and 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 you know, the breach and freezing and all that. One of the things, if anybody, uh, like Will Ainsworth, if you're watching, he's running, he's my cousin running for Lieutenant Governor of Alabama. The state legislatures hey, need to- Kelsey Gibson. Hey, there she is in Atlanta now. Big, She's a mortgage broker over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, doing well. Uh, pretty girl, too. Um, <laughs> the, the uh, It's $10 to unfreeze your credit per report. And so yeah. the, the legislature needs to get rid of that. Uh, we, I mean- you fools! Because they, they, remember, all these credit bureaus are doing are building a dossier. You like that word? Because that's like into the Trump stuff. There dossier. You go. Yeah. They're building a dossier on us, and guess what? We gave them permission to do it. We never did, right? So these fools are making millions, or no billions, probably, right, off of us, and we never told them we could. And then then they come and we say, "Hey, look, I'd like you to freeze my credit. That'll be ten dollars. What a deal!" Yeah. <laughs> Because I didn't do anything to of give course. you permission. Of By course. the way, in case anybody's wondering, hey, Kelsey, um, hey, Karen, um, in Europe, every it's free. And so we got it, you know, it, coming from the true conservative that I am, uh, and to be quoting the, EU, the uh, EU, they do have some things related to consumer protection that we really need to make sure that we bring to the United States. Everything else can stay over there. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to work. R.C. De Castro. Good. Hey, you remember him? Real good. From the Philippines, he was a, he, he was a server for us uh, on the Celebrity Summit. Remember him? Yeah. Yeah, he's back in Manila right now, I believe. So, how are you, uh, R.C.? Hope you're doing well back home. Uh, coming to see you, by the way, 
in the Philippines with the family in what do I be there? I'll be there last week of June. So RC, if you're there, uh, hit me up, uh, send me a message, and let me know that you will be there, and I'm gonna come see you. So, All right. uh, what's next? Uh, we're gonna talk about Robin Hood because hey, look, I here's the problem. There's somebody right there, not up here. Well, I guess it is that caricature, and this guy got me addicted to just dabbling in the stock market. When I say addicted, I wouldn't say addicted, but I'm. I'm What's halfway. your You like it. I, it you enjoy I'm, it yes. tremendously. And the beautiful thing about it is, you're being the scientist that you are in Georgia Tech grad, I keep saying that, but hey, it's impressive because yeah. yeah. I couldn't gotten in, um, is that always what was holding me back was paying, and I'm saying this as an agent, a real estate agent, which is, uh, uh, Ken's talking about, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, he's talking about the dollar, the, yeah, yeah. the value of the dollar. Yeah, yeah. Um, is that the commissions. I wanted to be able to get in and out of really cheap. And there's a company called Robinhood. It's an app that you can uh, download on your phone and it is a full service broker. Uh, hey, Larry in Michigan, go blue. Uh, yeah, those commissions per trade can be, you know, they used to be probably eight, nine, ten dollars. I think a lot of them have dropped down to four, five, six, seven dollars. Even that. Robinhood's free. It's dead free. And, and the best thing you can do, because you can't have... Nothing a, better than dead free. Yeah, dead free. Because it's dead and free, right? <laughs> uh, but one of the things about Robinhood that, that I love is the fact that uh, I don't have to worry about that because there are some things that cause a higher commission, right? In these other, with Schwab, Fidelity, yeah. uh, TD, Water, TD Ameritrade. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a Fidelity and Schwab account, but that's not where I trade. I stick with those with mutual funds, ETFs, those type things. Well, you know, you've done some stuff, uh, options and stuff like that, which you have to do with the big brokers. But just getting the idea of how to really understand the stock market and trade stocks without having to worry about, I can buy one share of stock and it costs me no commission, right? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great deal. And I'm gonna put a, I'll put a link down below. And uh, by the way, I'll, out of full disclosure, I'm gonna put a link down there below. And if you do sign up with them, uh, you get a share of stock. I get a share of stock, and it's a random drawing of what share you get. I mean, I had a buddy sign up the other day, and I got a share of Sirius XM stock. There you go. I didn't do anything for it. I mean, we he just put, I don't know, That's 100 That's a pretty cool in. deal. So, and what if you a end little, up with... A little random draw for a, a share of stock. Nothing wrong with that, and yeah, I like cool. free. So, download it. It's called Robinhood. Uh, yeah, free is usually the best price out there. Absolutely. And, and by the way, if you're wondering how they do it free, uh, and... You've never done it, I don't think, but uh, no. talk about they make their money off the folks that are trading on what's called margin, and that means they're borrowing house money to yeah uh, margin margin. You can usually you're usually allowed, uh, let's say, forty fifty percent. So if you've got a balance of of twenty thousand, they might let you actually hold positions up to thirty thousand plus um, with commission, right? Yeah, and you're and typically, I think last time I looked at that, you're paying about nine percent interest. So. Uh, that's annual. Um, Annualized. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's say you trade on margin and you hold a position for thirty days, and obviously you're going to pay that thirty days of interest. So they must have a lot of people doing that. Yeah, to offer it for free. So, you, so we just need trades. to take advantage of that and trade stock for free. So, yeah. uh, there's Joey Murray. Yeah. Uh, Joey Murray. I'm sure he knows about the old Robin Hood. Yeah. The, the free, yeah. free yeah. trading. Now, free commissions. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Joey Murray loves. Free commissions, I bet. Oh, right? I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure he in the does. stock market, we're talking about Joey since you just joined. Um, anyway, so we're going to talk about shopping for a mortgage now. Yeah. Hey, Emily, I hope you're doing well. All so right. yeah, we want to we want to uh, want to bring this up because obviously everybody wants to shop for the mortgage. They right. shop for everything, right? You want to shop for the car, you shop for your refrigerator. I do it. Shop for the TV. You shop for your internet service. I mean, uh, <laughs> hold on. The king of, of North Carolina real estate just came on here. His name's Jason Bramblett. I mean, funniest guy on the planet, most giving guy on the planet, but one of the funniest, man, the king the of king North, Carolina North Carolina real estate. Up on yeah, Tobacco absolutely. Road. Oh, he is. He's down south, Greensboro. Uh, yeah, Joey, Joey's dude. wealth without Wall Street. No stock market. I like it. Hey, there he is. There's Bramblett. He there has he good goes. taste in shows. That's right. That's, we'll have to bring him on one day. He would, he's a hoot. Good golfer too. Uh, yeah, but anyway, that's good. Keep going. Sorry. All right. So, so look, I just wanted to point out a couple things when you're shopping for a mortgage um, that you need to look at. I mean, obviously, you know it's interest rate. You know, right. if you're whatever program you're looking at, you're going to be able to compare the rate that two lenders are giving you. So, we're looking at interest rate and fees. The fees are really important, but it's hard 
for a lot of people to just look at this and, and figure out the difference between what's going on. So really you're looking at lender fees, okay? Because lender right. fees are the ones that vary, obviously, from lender to lender. That might sound obvious, but uh, you've got title, attorney, recording fees. All of those are going to be the same no matter where you go. And so let me give no you matter, an example. Let's stop. I mean, that's a big nugget right there, right? Because you just said the fee, the the interest rates are the same no matter where you go, which is pretty true. No, no, no the interest right? rate will be be different. Interest rates could be different. Okay, obviously the interest rate could, could be, different. be, but there's a par value, right? But there are some fees that are going to be the same, like okay. the, the the lender. I mean, the uh, attorney fees, the title recording fees. So well, taxes. For example, if I were to give you an estimate and I I cut the attorney fees. I cut the uh, title and the right. recording. I made all of those really low. Then I can make my estimate look lower than the next guy. Right? You can make your estimate. Look, yes, no yeah. doubt, no question. So, so this is just part of information education. So you can ask the questions. Um, but underwriting, appraisal, processing, doc prep, things like that. Those are lender fees. Those are the ones that are different uh, between lender to lender. So you want to look at interest rate. But you also got to look at the fees because a lot of times those rates will incorporate what's called an origination fee, which that's typically what people call points. That's how y'all used to get paid, essentially, right? In the old days. So yeah, so you've got like one percent or one point is going to be one percent okay. of the loan amount. So if it's two hundred fifty thousand dollar loan, then that origination fee is probably going to be about twenty five hundred bucks. So do both lenders have that fee on there? Um, These so, apples to apples. So is what typically you're the lower rates are going to have. The higher fees. They work okay. in inverse, right? Yes. Yeah, so you've got to look at that. Because that's the biggest me, thing that I think people miss. Let me ask you this. The, and I think that's something that we always, you're right, we miss because the bank's still going to have to make money. Let's just be real. They're a business. So that one, for instance, especially two or three years ago, we knew the 1% was going to hit you either up front or on fees or on rate, right? Yes. The rate was either going to be higher with no, or you're going to pay the 1% and you're going to be lower. But one of the biggest manipulators that I see as an agent oftentimes is um, the, uh, and we're going to get to that question in a second, Jason, uh, is when you're comparing those two, some of the lenders will lowball taxes, lower insurance, so it looks like that monthly payment is going to be lower with them. Yeah. But they haven't used the same value that you did. And one thing I can tell you about you is you, you always give a very realistic number so that they're not mad at the end. But when we deal with some of these stage coaches and stuff, uh, it's a reference there to a bank, uh, they oftentimes will lowball it so that they can beat you, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and a question was asked real quick yeah, about the, APR. The APR. I think the APR is, it's a little bit confusing, but the APR basically takes your interest rate and factors in all of the um, financing fees. So it's going to factor in all the lending fees. It's going to factor in mortgage insurance. So that can be a good indicator, I, but I have seen problems with that um, where lenders will put out incorrect APR. So that's why I stress getting the details. It's, it should be easy to, to get a line item estimate from your lender and compare the two apples to apples. And you, gotta, you know what your down payment is. So you're looking at cash to close. Are there big differences there? Part um, of those stage coaches. You know, but there's a lot of things. I've been doing this for 13 years. There's just so many, like uh, seller credits. Yeah. You know, I've yep. seen people sneak in $8,000 seller credits. So your cash to close looks different, but you don't realize that they're building in an $8,000. You, you really got to work with somebody you trust, you feel good about, but it's it's really about getting the details and breaking down those fees and the rates. Emily, Emily, great. Work with us at Alumni Properties and uh, married to a former Ole Miss quarterback. Uh, yes. Anyway. Um, well, I wasn't going to ask you about APR because that's a good question that we see at yeah. the closing table. Here's a problem with nerds like you. I mean, not really a nerd, but numbers guy. Yeah. Right? APR, man, you just breeze right on through APR. And one thing I want to talk about that is that uh, they'll see a number that says my it's 4% is their interest rate. And then they get to closing and they see 5.25 as the APR. Now... What does that mean? What does? Why is it four as the interest rate, and it says five point two five as the APR? Why is that? Yeah, that could be that could be a, a bunch of different things, but basically that large of a spread between your interest rate and your APR means there's a lot of finance and fees built in there. So those could be lender fees, they could be discount points origination, mortgage insurance is another big one that goes in there. Can um, that can that vary? 
Can what vary? The the mortgage insurance. The mortgage insurance can carrier. vary from from lender to lender. Because that's because yeah. there's different carriers, right? Yeah, exactly. So Except we can, for FHA. So we can shop that out uh, on conventional mortgage insurance. Yeah, we can shop that out between different companies and and maybe save some on the rates there. But yeah, so that's that the APR does encompass the lender fees and everything else that's in there. Uh, I've just seen some problems with that, so I would rather have the the breakdown, the interest rate, all the fees that you're paying, and because I mean a lot of people, a lot of average people just don't understand the APR. So I don't I, think anybody understands, not just average. I feel like this is a little bit easier to understand. Well, no, that's right. If, well, if you can really just lay it out side by side. Uh, the the only other thing I was going to bring up was. Um, one of the other big things I see that throws people off when they're looking at monthly payment. So they call me and, and we put together an estimate. I give them a monthly payment, but this other guy was lower. Well, the, you got to look out for the tax and insurance estimates. Okay, so those could tax be a little insurance. bit different. So that goes into your monthly payment. So if I'm, if I'm quoting the tax and insurance really low, then my monthly payment could look less than the other guy, but the tax and insurance are what they are. And let me ask you this. Another area I've seen, I don't think they're supposed to do it, but they do it is let's say your normal escrows that you're going to escrow are three months of insurance, yeah. three months of taxes. Well, guess what the other lender does? He yeah. does two, and and he's just trying yeah. and to... and that's the same thing. That, and I'm talking about the property, the real estate taxes, okay? Yeah. The real estate taxes. I want to make sure that people aren't confused. Real estate taxes and your homeowner's insurance, okay? So if we... The we, variable number by... Yeah. yeah. Just by... So we just... We, 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 what it we is. calculate that out and use an estimate when we put them together. So if, if that could easily manipulate the numbers, and like you said, adding a couple of months to the escrow could change things as well. Right. Rain. Hey, Rain. Over in Manila. In Rain. Manila. Hey, she could kick your butt too, by the way. Good. Bodybuilder. What, what do you call those when, they, when they're when they in the competition, you know, doing the flexing? And, Bodybuilders, I believe. I guess, right. is that what it is? Miss yeah. Olympia, right? Yeah. So I believe anyway, that's she could kick both of our butts, you know, with both hands, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, hope you're doing good, Rain. Uh, uh, I'll see so that's you. It on that. Hold on, I'm gonna see her in June. So, oh good, when I'm over there. So, um, anyway, look forward to that. But if you have any questions on on that stuff, shopping for the mortgage, uh, what to look for, uh, something might not look right, something doesn't sound right, right. you know, obviously, let us know. Absolutely, and you know, like I said, we're gonna try to uh, uh, put anything we've talked about down in the notes if we haven't already. Credit people who who uh, we'll have to look at credit people that, yeah. that Cody mentioned. Uh, he guaranteed. Guaranteed. Uh, hey, Cody guaranteed it. You can take it to the bank, baby. Uh, and uh, if y'all have any recommendations, because, I mean, let me say this. Of all the beer we've had, uh, thank you. Uh, she said happy birthday. Uh, I'm uh, 42. But anyway, um, of all the beer, this is middle of the line. The first week was the best. Yeah. Next week. Middle of the road. Yeah. But we got to mix it up. That's, what, that's what's fun about the happy hour. We do something a little different every time, and uh, it keeps it light, keeps it fun. Oh yeah, and plus we get to have hey, a beer at work. Yeah, hey, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's right. Uh I forgot y'all knew each other. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh Rain Rain you know, Rain worked with us for what I mean, five years at least, right? Yeah. So uh we miss her uh a lot. But uh any other questions anybody's got? Uh we'd glad to answer that and uh, oh by the way, I, I gotta get your advice on something. Um last night, you know, it was only about thirty degrees. And you know, <laughs> You have that Mexican standoff with your kid, and hey, mama's not around, nobody's around. We're at the dance studio, and look, I was like, hey, look, uh, she she didn't want to wear a coat, and she had like you know a little leotard on. I'm like, look, we're just going to the car. How hard could this be? Yeah. But I did make sure I said, hey, don't tell mama. <laughs> Dumbest move I've ever had. Yeah. Right? I, I said, don't tell mama. Famous so, last words. Yeah. So I get a call today, and let me tell you, I love my wife to death, but boy. She was hot Sounds as a like hornet. He was in trouble. Yes, I got the old. Uh, do you know? You know, it's thirty degrees. What you need to do? So, uh, note to self: always. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't ever start with a "Don't tell mama." Don't tell mama because mama gonna find out. That's right. Josh Brisman, the king of Mobile, king of Mardi Gras, we'll call him. Uh, attorney down in Mobile, great dude. Uh, went to law school with the guy. He's a big. I think Josh, aren't you doing what mainly criminal now? So uh, if you. Happy to be watching this uh, and uh, get arrested in Mobile. That's Call right, him. Ken. Ken said it's uh, let her be cold. Yes, yeah, let her be cold. Hey, so, I, that's what I thought. Yeah, <laughs> as a dude, uh, natural consequences. But anyway, um, want to thank everybody. Yeah, thank you guys. Let us know what we can do to help. 
And we'll see Get you next with. Thursday. Yeah. Uh, same time, same place, and it's uh, it's happy hour. Happy uh, hour. One last time. Yeah. Down the hatch. See you guys. Josh, you're a great man. See y'all soon. Bye-bye.